Hello and welcome back to my channel. Something a little bit different today. Uh, I'm here with my dad who has recently finished converting um, an electric van. So this is a Nissan ENV200. Yep. Um, so it's 100% electric. How big is the battery pack? 24 kilowatts. So 20, 24 kilowatt drive pack and what, what sort of range you get up for that? Uh, uh, 100 miles on a good day if you drive carefully. Okay. And you've done something quite clever with a additional battery pack in there. Yeah, in this the one's uh, uniquely got another boost pack in the back that can uh, be really pushed. Get about another 15 miles out of it. Fortunately, the way the vehicle directs you to charging stations, I've never had to use that, but it's uh, on the back of your mind, it's there if you need it. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a twin bear camper, rock and roll bed. Slug twin birth. Yeah. Cool. Lovely. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look inside. Okay, so here we are inside. So you've got the like slimline rock and roll bed. How how wide is that? It's a metre, I believe. Yeah. A metre wide. Simple operation. Pull that lever down there, which is the locking mechanism, and then just pull the bed down. And she comes down flat. But it's a full six foot, 1.83 meters, I believe. So, um, and then over here we've got, um, is that a Dometic fridge? It's a compressor fridge. So. What's it sound? Dometic isotherm. <laughs> yeah, compressor driven fridge. And so I guess a nice, a nice feature of that is that you can be using the bed and also get to the fridge. Yeah, it's quite a snug van, I say not, other layouts, once it's down, you can't get access to it. That was just a way of doing that. It's also got the second door, which comes as standard, and another way to get access to that from the other side. And so you've gone for the induction induction hob rather than having gas on board? It's, the whole idea of the project was a zero emission, both for drive and, and camping. So the induction hob, great for campers, and I think it's going to be you know, come up in the market soon. It doesn't generate a lot of external heat in the, in the vehicle. It's very efficient at power and it can be run from either campsite hookup or from its boost pack in the back via the inverter. Oh right, so it's got an inverter. Yeah. Yes, yeah, part of the, um, the, uh, the boost package is a, a big charger inverter system that can run not only the, the, the hob here, but also we've got AC lighting here, we've got a coffee machine on board, etc. Um, nice, okay. And you've got, got a little uh, sink at the back there as well? Yeah, there's that with a power tap on it. So. Just cold water, but uh, it's, a, it's a camper van, it's not a motorhome. Cool. And how, how big's your water tank? Water tank's 14 litres. So again, not, not very big, but enough to wash up with and uh, for cooking, etc. Yeah, for a weekend away or a night away or something yeah. like that. One of the main safety points on this i found is once you finish cooking, turn it off, it's cold to touch. Very, yeah, for a small van like this, very safe, very good, I think. Well, that's a nice thing about induction, I guess. Yeah. And so you've gone for the single swivel on the passenger seat? Yeah, the, the standard van comes with a fixed seat, doesn't even go forward and backwards. Um, um, so gone for this, it makes it a lot more room in here, particularly when the table's up here, you can sit either side and eat. Um, very simple to move. This lever, move the seat forward and backwards, you need a little bit of, of adjustment there, but basically it just turns around like that. And then you'll hear it lock into place, that's locked. Another unique feature of this, if you don't want to do the swivel, sometimes you can just do that and it makes a, a flat surface, even to sit on or just as a table. And is that, is that swivel plate uh, meant to be for a, a Nissan or have you modified uh, no, that? No, it's a modified one. I think it's meant for a Mercedes. It's a TUV approved, so it's uh, crash certified as well. So the MOT people were happy with that. But you see, it's quite a positive click in when it goes in. Again, compact space. Came up with a uh, proposal where we've got a cap that comes out of there. The actual table leg skirt on Velcro here. Very simple, but easy. And there's a fan it fitted in here, so that just goes into there. down the table sits in these uh, rebates here it comes out like that what we've done we've done an offset on that it just makes it more flexible when you are either like that side by side but you can also just go like that just makes it a bit more flexible to help you might use it cool and that just slides in there when you're going along so it doesn't rattle around yeah, there's, a, there's another uh, matching one of these in there so it doesn't uh, move around when you're traveling Nice. Under the ring. Uh, and so where do you where do you store that? Store 
Store the table leg. This just goes under there. Very simple. I've left some uh, retaining rings here for clamping other things down, whether you've got your dog crate in here or a push chair or something. But uh, these are just velcroed under there. This is a small van, it's just trying to find spaces to put things. There is storage under the seats here, both, both sides as well. And obviously, when the roof's up, there's storage up here. Yeah, and, and did I see some storage under the, the sink there? Right under here. Tampa door here. There's a um, storage that goes right the way back back to there. I'm going to say it's I don't know, that thick and uh, three foot long. Lovely. And there's obviously lots of storage under the bed as well. And you mentioned some uh, you mentioned some 230 volt lighting. Uh, that's that lamp at, in the back, yeah, is it? Yeah, two two sockets on the inside here, driven off the inverter. So we're not plugged into anything at the moment, but uh, off the inverter itself. So these are switched on here, and the the safety breakers etc much like you have at home there's a consumer box in the back of the van we can show you shortly for safety wise but you've also got you've also hello. got hello yeah. acquired a dog <laughs> going to muddy dog <laughs> um and then you've got some 12 volt 12 volt lighting as well yeah we've got leds in the, in the roof here led here which Two yeah, intensities. There's one here again. Even goes blue if you really want blue. But, uh, <laughs> and a couple these, of spots in the the spots roof. In there. the roof there. What we have retained is the uh, interior lighting here, and in the front are all is the Nissan side of the electrics, and the camper side are kept very separate. So there's no way uh, yeah, you can uh, drain one for the other, etc. So those operate when the this doors op open. Yeah, as you would normally. And they run off the. They run off the, the the standard 12 volt battery in the front of the vehicle, which it still has, even being an electric vehicle. It has a. And these are just operated from here. USB, obviously, standard, standard fitment now, rather than a 12 volt socket. We have the seat round the other way just, just now, but clearly turning it round that way also gives you the option to have this as a. As Alm a almost like a bedside like cabinet, that. Could be a bedside cabinet. Like yeah. Luxurious. And obviously, you can still get to the fridge here from the bed here, the door opens here. You access to your charging points, lights, etc. from here. And so obviously there's no uh, no additional berth up in the pop top. Is there an option for that on, on um, this van? I think it could be used as a small child's bed. You could re up something laterally, but really it was there to give more additional headroom and ventilation, but more more practical for us has been the storage when you're camping because you know, the stuff that you may keep under the bed or in the vehicle when you're traveling you, you don't want to keep moving it around so you can go straight up the top got there. a nice shelf there haven't you yeah, yeah very much so it makes it so, look, makes it seem so much bigger when you're in the van as well yes yeah mm. yeah, yeah. You, you can't be you know stand up and get dressed rather than trying to do it on your knees yeah Right, so this is a, a clever bit really, all the stuff that goes on at the back here. Just talk me through what's what's happening here. Right, well, the magic box we're in the back. Underneath here at the, the back is a five kilowatt lithium ion um, uh, battery pack. Um, and under the bed, all right, is a inverter charger. You've also got its control, control side of it and a, the solar regulator as well. Also on the roof is quite a large solar panel. So if the vehicle's just left outside, it tells the ability to recharge its, its own pack. And uh, at a practice, we've left it outside and it will go from flat to fully within a month, or you can leave the fridge on and the lights on, and it's still got an, it gets enough during the day to keep it charged up. But it's very practical. That's without any landline hookup. So, so let's just talk some numbers. Your solar panel is what 160, 140 watt. 140 watt? Yeah, slimline, but with a smart MVP controller, which is, makes the best use of even poor light conditions. And so the there's a 40 kilowatt battery pack in the front. 24, and the vehicle has a 24 kilowatt battery pack. Okay. Got five here. Uh, an additional here. five kilowatt lithium yeah. pack yeah. in the back here yeah. and a combi, combi inverter charger, charger inverter yeah. so the inverter charger is a three and a half kilowatt 100 amp charger it's automatic changeover so if, it, if it's got a supply it'll use it charge the battery up run your cooking things here but the reason it's a big inverter is so we can actually power the drive pack if needed if you run out of range inside here you can't actually see a lot but there's a small water tank here as i mentioned before which has got an electric driven pump access that from there but behind there is a drive pack and that's really where, where the clever stuff starts in there um, normally if you try to do that with a standard lead acid battery you'd end up with probably two or three hundred kilos of weight this thing comes in at under 70 kilos and you've got all that 
flexible power and the ability to charge it up very quickly either from solar campsite what we've got in this box here is your standard domestic electrics to make sure everything's safe from the inverter so you can have ac power even when you're not connected to anything so on there you'll find it labeled sockets and hobs so we've got the two sockets for the light and, and the other socket there off this one front one is sort of the waterproof socket in the front i'll explain about that for its boost charging Induction hob and then your RCD protection so everything is safe on board. If there were a fault anywhere, it just trips out, much like your house. Right, so this looks quite different in here to your normal diesel engine. Yeah, well it's, it's got two hatches. First one I'll go to that later, but that's where the electric goes in. But when you open here, you might well, you'd normally expect to find an engine. You'll find something that looks like an engine, but it isn't. So what we've got in there is effectively a drive motor and a big charging pack, which is that lot there. So it's basically just the battery charger and the transmission does mean there's an option here to put some storage in here and it's I think a perfect place to put some you know, awning and chairs and things okay so that that's the electric electric motor where's the the main pack for the vehicle the main power pack is actually between the floor it's slung very very low for the center of gravity so it's basically between the wheels um, under the floor so where you normally have your fuel tank your exhaust and things like that that's where the drive pack is and that's obviously the standard 12 volt car battery yep. that, that you'd expect yeah and that effectively runs your, your, your lighting here it runs the dash controls and all the computer and the sat nav and that sort of thing side of it and that's at 12 volts other things what you expect you've still got a radiator like your car so you've still got antifreeze and brake fluid and things like that some maintenance but there's, there's virtually no maintenance bar by checking tire pressures and washer bottle fluids and things and the, the charge ports that you yep. you mentioned earlier? What we've got in here, the standard Nissan EMV200 comes with two charge port points on this one. You get a fast charge point, which if you could turn up at the motorway services or maybe Ikea or something, you can charge this thing up from flat to 80% in 20 minutes. And Okay, and that goes into there, just like a petrol pump plugs into that. This one is your, either your home charging port or if you turn up at a... Uh, a smaller site, um, a supermarket or something, they'll have a charge port that you can put into there and that charges it up from flat to full maybe in seven to ten hours. At home we have a charger here, but we've also got one, another lead that will go into a 13 pin socket so you can turn up anywhere and plug it into a 13 amp supply overnight charge. Uniquely for this one, we've got another socket here as you can see, and you'll be more familiar to people, this is like a camp, campsite socket. That's exactly what it is. So you can put your campsite socket in there, that takes the power through the vehicle, through to the, the boost pack we talked about in the inverter charger. You can charge up that side of it, just for your cooking, your lighting, etc., and your fridge. But also, uniquely, you can, if the campsite hasn't got a, a vehicle charging point, you can charge up through this point here, through to the backpack, and literally just use the charging lead that you've got to go back into here. And that gives, I say, potentially another 15 miles of range if you want to do it, or you can leave that like that and it would charge the whole thing up overnight. So these, that one there, that one there are the stock the ones. ones. You've yeah. installed this. Yeah. Um, and that works essentially the same as a, a normal hookup, but also has a facility to charge your, your pack exactly. up. Exactly. Uh, in practice, we've used it on different campsites. Uh, some of the campsites you'll turn up. If you turn up your standard motorhome and you turn on your air conditioning, for example, you'd overload their, their shore supply. We've got a smart bit in here that you can actually turn it down so you can still run higher consumers without tripping the shore supply out or the landline from the campsite, which is again unique to this. Lovely, and just um, just remind me of the range again. So the range, standard range, you reckon is about 70 miles? In practice, um, it will do 100 miles in short journeys up and down stop starting. It's a city vehicle. You can get 100 miles out on it if you drive very carefully. In practice, I've been using it on a commuting runner around about 45 to 50 miles of dual carriageway and motorway use. It's about 70, 75 miles. You lose a little bit if you run the heater and air conditioning, but you can pre pre uh, cool or preheat the vehicle from, from its charge up point. So at home, you can plug it in, get your iPhone out and set the temperature so when you get in there it's nice and toasty or it's nice and cool. And the, the pack you've put in the back will give you another 15? If all else fails, if you get stuck, you can plug it in, turn it on, come back a little bit later and you'll have the 50 miles range. But the vehicle's pretty clever, it's never ran out. It, it will try and direct you to the nearest charging station. Okay, so... Um... The electric motor is on at the moment, is that right? Yeah, the keys are here, you can only, only turn on, you have to put your foot on the brake to do that, and then it's driving it much as you would with like an automatic car. Yeah. This is a Techno version, so it comes with quite a lot of information and uh, added features. So obviously it's got air conditioning and heating in it. It's also got heated seats down here, USB controls down here. Even got a heated steering wheel, which I found quite 
quite strange to start with, but it's a really nice feature. You can get in the morning and the wheel's nice and warm for your hands. But on here, obviously sat nav, people are familiar with this, but this has got a smart function where it actually work out your most economical route for the electric vehicle, so it knows the terrain as well. So it would try and divert you away from going up hills and things. But it does recharge going downhill, so it's always a, a bit of a game. But it will come up with an estimated mileage. If you put a destination in on that, it'll tell you if you can get it on a full charge, and it will direct you to the nearest charge point en route. And has this got regenerative, re regenerative braking? It certainly has, and, and it um, has a two ways of doing it. Automatically, if you stick it in eco mode, you get a slightly um, reduced throttle response. It makes it a little bit more economical anyway, but it gives you more regenerative braking. As soon as you come off the, the throttle, it starts to slow you down. Not by putting the brakes on, but by charging the battery up. And that shows it on the dash. You can see how much it's doing. But also, um, if you just move the... Uh, the gear lever when you're driving along, push it to one side, you'll see you'll get more regen. So if you're coming out to a junction rather than touching the brakes, you might just move the gear lever to one side and you'll see you'll get more regen. It gives you retardation and then we're back on the gas. And so you'll already be in, in drive, drive mode yeah, yeah. and then you knock it to the yeah. side. I guess literally just touch it like that. Those arrows yeah, there. Yeah. And it, it gives you more re regen or less regen. Very much a preference choice. You have similar controls on, on the steering wheel here. One of the, the functions when you're a bit uh, a techie head is it can do all sorts of things about routes and destinations, send the information to, to Nissan, etc. But um, traffic information, obviously, GPS, you can talk to it and give it all of these controls through your voice if you want. Um, but a lot of people just want to have a look at this screen, and as you're going along, you'll see it um, how much power you're using when you put your foot on the gas, like you would in a car, you'll see. The power use going up to here but also you'll see the mileage estimation go down but also when you regen it will show you the other way around it just gives you an, an idea of when you put the heaters on things what sort of power consumption how it affects the range but it's constantly working out this figure and it gives you a realistic figure to when it's going to run out of electric like your fuel gauge but i've run it empty and it still keeps going a little bit further it goes into a bit of a slow mode tries to date you to a, to a safe place right at the end but it, i've taken it beyond zero and it's it's never let me down put on the brake press the go button Dash lights up, give you an idea of the range. At the moment it's showing around about 70 miles range. And it's dri very much driving like an automatic car. So the engine's now running, you can't hear anything, there's no, no vibration. You the brake, it's in park at the moment, handbrake's on, and then you move it in the drive. I'll just move this, take it off sat now, and I'll just show you this uh, feature of the range and give you an idea of how it does its uh, regenerative braking. Okay, so it's saying key information there. If I were to turn the heating on for now, for example, you'll see the range shoot down a little bit. Down to 53 miles. Basically, the van's cold, it's cold outside, it's recalculating that. That's where the benefit of plugging it in before you leave on your journey to get the cabin temperature up or down helps your range. Right in the reverse, it's got a reversing camera built in, comes on automatically. Off we go. So you reckon the heated seats use less power than the... Definitely use it in the winter, I uh, can say precondition the car from your landline, use your heated seats and the heated steering wheel. By far the best way to keep your range up. Wear a vest, much better. Better for the environment. And you reckon it's pretty good fun to drive, pretty nippy? It is, I say, throw right, right from the lights, it um, shocks a few people when you're in a little white little van. Uh, the trick is stopping it wheel spinning, really, in the wet. But good fun to drive, it's after 50, 60 miles an hour, it's quite nippy. It will do the speed, the national speed limit, I understand that a little bit more, so I've been told. Hi guys, so I hope that you found that video useful and interesting. If you did, don't forget to give the video a like, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and if you've got any questions or comments on anything in the video, there's quite a few technical details and stuff in there, please uh, please do comment below and I will do my best to answer any questions that you have. Or, uh, and if I don't know the answer, I'll forward them on to my, my dad and uh, I'm sure he will be happy to answer your questions. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and uh, stay tuned for loads more content. Cheers.